The Mexican-American War began due to disputes between the two neighboring countries on who Texas belonged to. On February 2, 1848, the Treaty of Guadalupe, known as the Treaty of Peace, officially ended the Mexican-American War and increased America's territorial claim by over half a million square miles. Territories annexed by the United States during the Treaty of Guadalupe include California, Nevada, Utah, and parts of Arizona. With the defeat of its army and the fall of its capital, in September of 1847, Mexico entered into negotiations to end the war. Mexico had claimed the area in question since weaning its independence from the Spanish Empire in 1821, following the Mexican War of Independence. The Spanish Empire had conquered part of the area from the American Indian tribes over the preceding three centuries, but they remained powerful and independent indigenous nations within the northern region of Mexico. The treaty called for the U.S. to pay $15 million to Mexico and to pay off the claims of American citizens against Mexico, up to $5 million. The land that the Treaty of Guadalupe brought into the United States began, between 1850 and 1912, all or part of many states including California, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. The Lewis and Clark expedition began on January 18, 1804, when President Thomas Jefferson tasked Meriwether Lewis with exploring lands west of the Mississippi River that compromised the Louisiana Purchase. Lewis chose William Clark as his co-leader for the mission. The excursion lasted over two years. Along the way, they confronted harsh weather, unforgiving terrain, treacherous waters, injuries, starvation, disease, and both friendly and hostile Native Americans. Their mission was to explore the unknown territory, establish trade with the natives, and affirm the sobriety of the United States in the region. One of their goals was to find a waterway from the U.S. to the Pacific Ocean. The exploration of Lewis and Clark was the first exploration into the West and sparked the movement of people migrating into the western parts of America. The California Gold Rush began on January 24, 1848, when gold was found by James W. Marshall at Sutter's Mill in Coloma, California. The news of gold brought approximately 300,000 people to California from the rest of the United States and abroad. The effects of the gold rush were substantial. Whole indigenous societies were attacked and pushed off their lands by the gold seekers called 49ers. By the time the gold rush ended, California had gone from a thinly populated ex-Mexican territory to having one of its first two U.S. Senators, John Fremont, selected to be the first presidential nominee for the new Republican Party in 1856. By 1869, railroads were built from California to the eastern United States. At its peak, technological advances reached a point where significant financing was required, increasing the proportion of gold companies to individual miners. Gold worth tens of billions of today's U.S. dollars were recovered, which led to great wealth for a few, though many who participated in the California gold rush earned little more than what they had started with. The Louisiana Purchase was the purchase of a territory of over 828,000 miles in the center of America. If America had never purchased this land, it could be said that it would still remain to France. America would be split into two and we would have to travel over France or around coasts to get to this other America. Trade routes would have to be created through France or ship routes from coast to coast. America would be 50% smaller, causing major repercussions in our military production and causing a split and difference in government and citizens. The territory in the Louisiana Purchase today is majorly Republican, so would the new America be mostly Democratic? Trump would never have been our president, abortions are legal and safe, gay marriage has been legal for years, Planned Parenthood continues to help women, my mom can finally get her citizenship, and we all sleep peacefully at night knowing there's always a backup America if we don't like the one we live in. As many know, the famous duel between Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr ended with a quick bang. 
but what few people understand is that Alexander Hamilton, betting that Aaron Burr's first shot would miss, planned to fire in the air. He fired in the air to make a statement that Burr wasn't worth wasting a bullet over. But what would happen if Burr did miss? How would the world have been drastically different than it is today? Well, for one thing, America would have been a lot bigger. Ah! Hamilton, who survived the duel, would have run for a president against Jefferson's hand-picked successor, the brilliant but colorless James Madison, and one going away. He would have taken the country in a new direction, creating a trained army to win the War of 1812, absorbing Canada and changing the nation's name to United States of North America. Hamilton would have pursued Congress to pass constitutional amendments, empowering him to break them into several smaller states, more amenable to federal control. He had discussed this idea with several people before the duel. If the Virginians resisted, President Hamilton would have ordered his army to flatten them. This victory would have made it easy to abolish slavery. Now would have come an opportunity for Hamilton to introduce one of his favorite ideas, the Christian Constitutional Society. He had proposed it when Jefferson won the presidency in 1800. It was designed to make Christianity a policy force in the nation. Each year, President Hamilton would have given a fervent speech at a national convention in Washington, virtually guaranteeing sainthood to those who backed him.